Today we've got a great topic. Today we're going to talk about how to create time. We all have a satisfaction associated with doing something that somebody finds useful. So creating time, you know, it sounds like science fiction and stuff, right? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we all know, or most of us are familiar a little bit with Einstein and relativity and, you know, that time actually speeds up and slows down uh, when you move at a certain speed and at, at the speed of light, um, time conceptually stands still and doesn't move at all and there's been all kinds of science fiction books written about that about a, a ship traveling at the speed of light and coming back you know right at the same time it left or before it left if you exceed the speed and so forth and then having you know a year or a hundred or a thousand or a million years uh, passed by on on earth and so forth so I'm not gonna do complex mathematics and we're not gonna talk about creating time in the sense of you know differential equations or Lorentz transformations what I am going to talk about is 24 hours in a day. You have it and I have it. And I absolutely guarantee that no matter what you are doing with your time, however busy you think you are, and however much you think you get done, there is a great deal of time that you don't use wisely and don't use like you would wish to. And how can I make such a bold statement? Well, I read earlier this morning a post by uh, someone that I know who's a transformational coach and she said take, take a 24 hour period take a seven day period and every 15 minutes just note what you're doing and you know you set an alarm on your phone and do that every 15 minutes note what you're doing and then just take a look at it and it would be a huge a revelation for you in terms of what you actually are doing with your time and how much of it you're spending on things that you say aren't important to you and how much opportunity there is to trade time that you're using in things that are not very important for things that are. I, I do something similar. I happened to read that this morning and I really liked it. When I coach people, uh, if you were my client, I would do the same thing. I say keep a time log because it, inevitably if you actually keep track of what you do with your minutes from when you get up to when you go to bed and you allow time for showering and relaxing and all of those things, it's, it's scary how much time we don't use intentionally. And you can say waste or whatever. I, I don't mean that in a pejorative way, but I just mean if you, if you looked at it, a true log of where all of your time went in a week and you, how much was sleeping and how much was you know eating and how much was socializing and how much was working and how much was whatever that there would be these blocks of time that you would look at and say why am I spending so much time X whatever X is and <clears throat> that by itself is a huge source of time so if you're looking to create time time to improve a relationship time to work out time to create money time to start a business, time to finish a degree, time to get back in shape, time to do anything. The first place to start is to figure out where all of your time goes right now. So 24 hours, seven days, keep track of what you do. Uh, keep a time log and 15 minutes is the same interval that I recommend that I saw in that post this morning. So great. Every 15 minutes, what are you doing? Now attorneys and other professionals, when they bill, they bill in tenth of an hour increments, which is six minutes. So 15 minutes, four times an hour checking what you're doing or keeping track of what you did to a quarter hour is not unprecedented at all and it isn't actually that difficult if you keep a notebook with you and you write down maybe every 15 minutes or maybe at the end of an hour, you know, what you did. What are the four things that took up your hour or every 15 minutes? What are you actually doing at that moment? And it, you know, if you set an alarm on your phone, it can be a recurring thing and it just keeps going. And you just make those notes and then you're able to do that. So that's the first thought about finding time that you today don't think you have. Finding time that today you just don't think you have because you're so flippin' busy. Not true, and there's tons of it there. Now I'm gonna talk about a second way to create time that to me is more powerful, more important, and more productive 
than just finding the usage of time and changing it. And, and that is this. <clears throat> what do you do with the time that you have? So I'm making this video right now. And my full attention and intention is focused on talking to you and talking about how to help you create time so you can do more of the things you want and create a bigger impact or make more money or be happier or whatever it is that you, you, know, you want from, from the time that you've been given here. So, so how do we do that? Well, finding lost time was what we talked about to start with. Keep a log of where it goes and then you can see where all your quarter hours go of the 168 hours you have in a week, right? This is more subtle but more powerful. And that is this. <clears throat> in a given moment or a given minute or a given hour, how much of your attention, what percentage of your attention is totally focused on what you're doing and not pulled away by distractions or other thoughts or random intrusions or thinking about what's coming next or what was before? Another way I ask that question is, if a situation happens uh, and you, you, you think about it afterwards, what percentage of learning that was available to you in that circumstance do you think you actually picked up? Now, I've done a survey about that and even with some very smart people that I've talked to, the number is really small. Some people are pretty pessimistic and they say, you know, 1% that in any given circumstance, we're really only getting 1% of what we could have achieved, learned, absorbed in a, in a situation. And we know the statistics that we don't use all of our brain power. We also know that the subconscious mind processes millions of times the speed of the conscious mind and so forth. So let's be generous and let's say that you absorb 10% of the available truth in a given situation. Well, that means just a percentage, you're using 10% of the capacity at any given moment. That's a, a leverage factor of 10. So if you somehow were able to achieve 100 times, 100%, that's 10 times as much value, 10 times as much production, 10 times as much creation, 10 times as much. Now let's pretend we're not perfect and you can only ever get to 50% efficiency. That's still a leverage factor of five. So. What I'm trying to help you understand is what I've discovered is that when I slow down, not speed up, I slow down and focus 100% or as close as I can get to it without having my mind be somewhere else or some when else, past, future, and do 100% in a given moment of what I'm doing and I do that repeatedly. My ability to create and the quality of what I create, my ability to speak and relate and the quality of communication goes up not a little, double, triple, quadruple. And in that way, that is a hugely leveraged and leverageable way to create time. And so if you did just a little of both of those, Figure out where your time goes and figure out how to improve. Double the attention, the focus you bring in every moment. I can guarantee you, you will double or triple the time that you have right now. That means that what you could accomplish if you wanted to is far more than you settle for right now. My invitation and encouragement to you is to try it. I have. It works. I love it. It has produced enormous results and capability and production improvements and fun and joy for me. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching the videos. Take this opportunity, leave a comment, subscribe most of all, and don't forget to spread the word about this channel.